right, welcome back. Inflation is real and it is here. It's all around us. Toys, of all things, are about to get more expensive and the Federal Reserve is finally starting to tell you what we've been telling you for a long time. Inflation is a danger. So buckle up because it's going to be a bumpy ride while the Fed continues to push easy money policies. Yesterday, the central bank decided against raising interest rates again, even as it admitted the economy is booming. They're keeping interest rates near zero, a policy that could lead to even more inflation. So what does this all mean for you and how do you prepare for what we're about to see? Let's welcome in Seth Denson, business and market analyst and author of The Cure, a blueprint for solving America's health care crisis. And also in with us today, Let's welcome in America's accountant, Dan Geltrude. He's a CPA and founder of, the, of Geltrude and Company. Heather, who's normally here, is out, but uh, we're going to have her back in the same group next week. I'm going to call this our money huddle. All right, so guys, let's huddle up on this, talk about inflation. Uh, Dan, how do I prepare for inflation? How do I talk to my financial advisor about what we're going to see over the next uh, months, perhaps years? John, let's first just uh, define inflation. Inflation is when the stuff that you want goes up in price. It's not about when two lines are intersecting. Inflation is when you go to Starbucks and your coffee costs you seven bucks. That's inflation. So as prices are going up, what can you do? You have to figure out where you can put your money, where it is going to outpace inflation, meaning the stuff you want to buy is going up in price. How do you stay ahead of that? There's a number of ways to do that. The first thing that you can do is continue to invest in stocks. The stock market has continuously outpaced inflation. That's a place that you have to consider going to. Mm -hmm. Investing in hard assets, whether it's, it's gold or precious metals or energy, um, in fixed income, there's a thing called TIPS, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. What happens there is those in investments move with inflation. And, of course, as far as real estate goes, REITs are also a good way to hedge against that. But overall, John, it's all about diversity. Diversity, always important here. Seth, do you agree? I do. I think the long-term game is always something to keep in mind here. Let's recognize that there are other investments in, besides just hard commodities. There's those investments that are impacted by hard commodities. For example, mining companies, right? I'm not saying don't invest in gold, but maybe you invest in the mining company you know, that's going after gold, raw materials, those types of things. But the key is, as we tell everybody, make sure you're talking to somebody who knows what they're doing. That's the key for any investors. Make sure you're talking to somebody who knows what they're doing. Talk to America's accountant, right? Uh, have a good team on your side, but look at the things that that are going to be helpful during an inflationary period. Facebook ads probably not going to get you where you want to go. You know, I read today, guys, that the Treasury Department is buying one hundred and twenty billion dollars of bonds a month. And, and when we talk about the Fed printing money, this is what we're really talking about right here, because these are the T-bills. The Treasury is buying these. I guess, from the American public. Dan, explain to us what's going on here, because when I hear the U.S. Treasury is buying $120 billion a month of, of bills here, th this should be concerning to folks, right? Yes, it should be. The technical term for what the federal government is doing here is it's called quantitative easing, where the government is buying back, in effect, its own debt. The purpose of it, without getting technical, the purpose of it is to try to expand the economy. The reason I believe that the Fed is going in the wrong direction here and what's going to cause inflation is if you try to expand this economy any more than it's already going on its own, you are going to create potentially a hyperinflationary period, which really hurts the American people. Yeah, it's sometimes the uh, road to a you-know-where, Seth, is paid with the best intentions. And, you know, it is kind of jarring to hear the Fed say, look, we know the economy is getting better. Uh, we're expecting, like, I don't know, 4 or 5%, 6% GDP growth next year. But yet we still need to pump in, you know, $9 trillion worth of government money into the economy. Uh, that, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. And I'm not, you know, I'm not an economist by any means. Even I can figure that out. Yeah, John, listen, I mean, Dan hit the nail on the head. Here's the reality. The economic car didn't stall we turned it off. 
So mm -hmm. pumping more gas into it is just going to flood the engine, and that's effectively what we've got going on. We've got massive liquidity, but we've got the, li the whiplash effect going on with the supply chain because we shut down the economy. That's going to create something we talked about a lot, stagflation. If we go back to the 70s and early 80s when we saw that, the yields were at 15 percent, interest rates at 20 percent. I think the Fed is worried that we're headed in that direction again, which is why they're holding off just a bit on this. Yeah, they can't turn it off. They know they need to, but they're worried about the consequences of doing so. Seth, Dan, great to see you guys. Thanks for making this all accessible to a guy like myself. We appreciate it. Coming up at the top.